and we've got a regulated pressure gauge to our adjustment right here. We've got tank pressure and regulated pressure. Hey guys, Brad here, and today we're gonna take a look at a compressor. This happens to be one of my favorite compressors that I own. This is the four gallon DeWalt uh, dual tank. The code on this is the D55154, and it's a really great compressor. Um, I've had this compressor for probably at least five years now. I had one of these prior to that. Uh, the reason why my last one burnt out on me, or broke I should say, is because I'm really bad at draining tanks. So, number one thing with compressors is drain your tanks. Even though it's a pain in the butt and sometimes it makes a big rusty mess on the ground, you really gotta make sure you drain them. And on this particular model, the drain is right there. So you just pull this down. Now I'm not gonna do it because it's loud and I don't wanna screw up my nice table, but that's where it is on this particular model. Now I, I love this compressor for the main reason, which is the way it's built. And that is having this nice sort of top on it here. Um, I can carry my hose reel with me when I'm going into a job site, just like this. Or I can chuck a T-stack on here, no problem. I'll grab one. Uh, T-stack's all around, I just gotta grab one here. So I can grab a T-stack, slap it up there, or a couple. Now it doesn't clip in, but I bet you if I spent some time, I could probably rig something up here so that I could. But you get the idea. It's just another way for me to carry my tools into my job site with minimal trips, right? That's the whole idea behind having all these T-stacks and um, boxes on wheels, essentially. So, yeah, like I was saying, two tanks on the side here. This is where we turn it on and off. So the simple switch right there. No problem. And then to change your oil, that's on the back right here. So you got a dipstick right there. And we've got lots of oil in here. And to take get the oil out, it's this plug right here. I know it looks like one of the nuts, but this is actually your drain plug, okay? So you make sure you always have enough oil in your compressor. That is a major reason why these things will fail. Now, this compressor here, a lot of compressors, I should say, in the cold weather, they just don't start up. And so a lot of times I'll just take like a, a halogen light or something and just stick it back here and you just want to heat up the oil. You want to heat up this, this whole casing here. Uh, or you just take a little heater, make sure you're far enough away and you just heat this area up. Now, this compressor will trip very easily if it's not uh, getting enough juice, enough power. Um, so back in here, a lot of guys don't know this, but the, there's a little fuse right up in here. You can see it, it says 16 on it, that little white dot. So a lot of the times this will blow, that's like your breaker. It'll pop before you pop the breaker on uh, your electrical panel, which is a very good thing. Um, so if you're looking for it, that's where it is. That's kind of hard to find, especially if you don't have instructions. So that's probably the biggest problem I've ever had with this is sometimes starting it up, they draw a lot of power and it can flick that, that breaker in, in someone's house. So, you know, you want to make sure you're on a decent plug, like in the garage where there's not a lot of power being drawn. So typically you can get a lot of juice from there. Um, sometimes outside plugs are okay. Depends on the year of the house. If it's a newer model home, then you'll probably be okay because those are typically wired just all together, all the outdoor plugs. 
so you know that that's one circuit. Whereas the older homes, when you're hooking up to a house, typically that's like connected to the living room, connected to the kitchen, and it's already drawing a lot of power. So that's why you typically blow the breaker. You just gotta find a plug that's not being used that much. So, little tip for you. Um, go back to the compressor. We've got two female outlets right here. And we've got a regulated pressure gauge or adjustment right here. We've got tank pressure and regulated pressure. Now I believe, I'm just gonna check my notes here. I think it was up to 125 PSI. Yeah, 125 PSI. It weighs 87 pounds. And the decibel level on this is about 83 decibels. So it's not super quiet, um, but it's also not super, super loud. It's just sort of right at that regular compressor decibel level, which is super annoying. Um, what else can I say about this thing? Yeah, you got regular tires here that you could just fill up with air. These aren't airless, so got to keep that in mind. This one's nice and full. My right one's actually flat. So I got to repair that. And yeah, just all around great compressor. I, I really like these guys. Had them for a long time. The M-Glow is, is a decent brand. And um, I got nothing bad to say about them. I, I have a, a belt driven M-Glow as well by DeWalt. And that thing is amazing. It just goes and goes and goes. So another great compressor. So yeah, guys, let me know what compressors you guys are using. Um, I know there's so many out there. This I wouldn't recommend this compressor for roofing or you know repetitious nailing, framing even. You want something bigger. Yeah, I was just pulling this down. This goes down too, if you're wondering. There's some knobs on the back. Show you all the features. Okay. That just locks in place. But yeah, you know, you want to pick the right compressor for the right job. You can frame with this, but you're not going to be doing a ton of framing, especially if you had two guns coming off this thing. It just, you'll be waiting for this to build up pressure constantly. So framers, you guys know what you use, you know, big tanks or um, belt driven or my preference just because they draw less power when they're starting up and, or you can just leave them running and they're quiet. So that's sort of my go-to uh, when I'm doing big stuff. But uh, yeah, if you're just doing trim work, light framing, um, I don't know, filling up tires, no problem with this thing. Um, cleaning out a shop with air, you know, it's a multitude of, of applications for a compressor of this size. But uh, yeah, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily do spraying with this. Um, you could, but you definitely would want to have a filter on it and you wouldn't want to be doing a ton of spraying. So really you got to know what you're doing and, and uh, how much air you're really going to need. But this thing will definitely get you through it. So guys, let me know what you think. Leave some comments down below. Um, Love to hear which ones you're using. I haven't bought a new compressor for a long time, so I'm still using this guy. Love to hear what you think of the new ones that are out there. But uh, yeah, leave some comments down below. Subscribe, hit that notify bell. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Till next time, keep on crushing it. We'll catch you later.